Normalization Part 2, Grade 12 IEBIT. This is the answer to the question in the previous video, Normalization Part 1. The primary key is the client ID and the car name together. It's a composite key. Our goals when designing a database are we've got to have accurate data. Data's got to be reliable. And there are things you can do to make sure this happens. There must be no redundancy. If you copying data again and again all over the database, you're going to waste a lot of space. Remember that a lot of databases have millions of records in them. Um, our database must be designed so that maintenance is easier and faster. We must not get modification errors when we modify data in one place. It should not cause problems somewhere else. And querying should be faster and more accurate because of a good design. In matric, when you normalize, you will this will be in your theory exam, you will normally get a big messy table. It will have lots of columns or fields and a few records to show you an example of what the data looks like. You'll have to divide it into two or more tables, generally three, four, five tables. You will have to choose primary keys for each table. You'll need to establish relationships between the tables. And you will write down the relation for each table. So that will look like table name and then brackets with each field in the brackets with the primary key underlined. The three problems that normalization fixes um, are the insert anomaly, delete anomaly, update anomaly, and a badly designed database will result in problems when you try to insert data, delete data, or update data. So these are called anomalies or problems. We're going to work with this example database. It's for a company where schools order books from it. It's called Books R Us, and they have a table for their orders called Table Books R Us. It's got an order number, the school's name, which is placing the order, their phone number, their delivery address, and the books that they require. An insert anomaly, the definition is, the design of a database prevents a user from adding data as and when needed. Now, how could this happen? Well, in our database, if a school just wants to get onto our mailing list so that we ad we send them adverts, but they're not ready to place an order, they won't have an order number because they're not placing an order. So this will prevent us from putting them onto the table. And that is a problem. It's called an insert anomaly. In a delete anomaly, when deleting one piece of data results in the unwanted removal of other valuable and required data. Hyde Park High School has placed two orders. So if we delete their first order, L0001, it's not a train smash because they still have all their data on our database. But if we deleted L0002, Bryanston High School's order, they don't appear on the database again, so we'll have lost all of their data. Their phone number and delivery address will be gone. And that is a problem which we call a delete anomaly. And this is caused by a poor design. We have a poor design of our table or our database. An update anomaly is when an item of data changes, but it has to be altered or changed in many records in the table. So say a school has already placed 10 orders and then they change their phone number. You are going to have to change that number in 10 different records, which is um, tedious and it can cause problems because you may forget to change it in some of the records and then you've got two different numbers floating around your database for the same school. A definition you also need to know is repeating data, also called repeating groups. Um, here we have um, this ta our table again, where we store many books for each order. Could have one, two or three books per order. 
and the books are the same kind of data and it's called repeating data or repeating groups because you have more than one bit of data in a column. Sometimes it's also shown this way, it's still called repeating groups and here we've added more than one column for the books required. So we only have one book in each column, but it's still called repeating groups. In normalization, there are five levels. If you carry on and study IT after school, you'll probably learn about these. Luckily for matric, you only need to learn the first three levels. First normal form, second normal form, and third normal form. Today we're just going to look at the first normal form rules. The first rule is to remove all repeating column groups. Then you need to remove data with multiple values or non-atomic data. That is data like a whole address, where you've got the street name, the number, and the suburb all in one field. That is not atomic. It is data with, which has lots of values all in one field. Um, Another example is a name and surname, that is non-atomic. You also need to ensure that each table has a primary key. To achieve this, we create separate tables to hold the related tables, or we can copy data down into blanks where there were repeating values, and um, then each repeating group value has data associated with it. We need to then choose a primary key to complete the rules, and also make sure the data is atomic. So uh, here's our 1NF example. We'll start with our example table again. I've just repeated the table as it was here, just for you to revise. And we'll see that the repeating data is the last column, the books required, because there are many books in one column. There is also non-atomic data. If you look at the delivery address, there is a street name and a suburb in one field, which is not atomic. So for first normal form, remember the rules, remove all atomic, remove all repeating column groups, data is atomic, ensure each table has a primary key. So here I have um, removed the repeating data by adding a new row in the table for each book required. Remember that in L0002, Bryanston High School had three books, Pride and Prejudice, Hamlet and Maths Grade 12. So now we've created two new rows for Hamlet and Maths Grade 12. And we've done the same for St. Teresa's. They had three books, Maths Grade 11, Maths Grade 12, and Science Grade 10, and we've created two more rows for those. Our next step is we copied the data for Bryanston High School into the two new rows, and the data for St. Teresa's into the two new rows. And then next step, we split the delivery address into street and suburb, so that each field is atomic. And lastly, we had to choose a primary key, and that is the order number and book required. We could also have done it a second way. We could have created a second table to stop the repeating groups. So in the, in the new table, the primary key is the order number and the book required together. Remember, a primary key must um, identify a record or row uniquely. So we need both the order number and book required for this. And we've also still split the delivery address into street and suburbs so that each field is atomic. Strictly speaking, we should have a third field there for street number. Because you can see St. Teresa's has 18 keys avenue, so the 18 should, strictly speaking, be in a separate column because it's, also, it may, it's making this field non-atomic. You can press pause here, try and put this table into first normal form. The answer is coming up now. So on the left, one possible way to put it into first normal form is to create new 
rows for each sport that a learner does. Or you could also move the sports and the IT into a separate column. I've here I've forgotten to underline ID and sports as the primary key. So um, this is the end of the slideshow. Have a good week. See you another time.